Dungeons and Daddies is a rowdy, horny, violent podcast for grown-ups. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Ah, and so we three purple robot figures meet again. We have all five children, and now we merely wait for the fathers to arrive. Although that last one was kind of, it was a little touch and go there. I was worried they were going to have to eat his skin. Yes, but instead they just gave him permanent trauma, which is a recurring thing for them seemingly. That's unfortunate. It doesn't matter. I have tempted the Daryl with an offer he is unable to refuse. I know that at this very moment they must be hurtling as fast as they can toward this very castle. Yes, I'm sure they will be traveling here with much haste now that their children's lives are on the line. Yes. A straight line, a line straight from where they currently are to the end of the story as they see it, with no bullshit in the middle, none whatsoever. And when they get here, they'll have to contend with our greatest weapon, a dragon that we control with the orb of dragon... Uh, where, where is the orb? Where, where's the anybody, orb? Has anybody seen the orb? Eyes on the orb, anybody? I have the orb, and it is mine forever! It is the first of seven Dragon Balls with which I will wish for anything that it I want. It is not a Dragon Ball, that is not a thing. I disagree! Dragon, Dragon, Dragon Ball! Get it, get away from, get away from right this second, he's gonna kill us all. Welcome to Dungeons and Daddies, not a BDSM podcast. Actually, it is occasionally a BDSM podcast, and we also play some D&D. This is a podcast about four dads from our world flung into the Forgotten Realms in a quest to rescue their lost sons. Can I, I interject for a second? Yeah, okay. I just feel like it's... You do every time, but sure, why not? It's been a while since there was any BDSM. We so need some true. sexy in this I, podcast. I do... No, I... <laughs> I wasn't saying that necessarily, but it does seem like false advertising to say it's like mostly a BDSM you're right, you're podcast. Right. It's not a BDSM podcast at this point. It is going to be today. But it will, maybe. Just trust you me. You never know. It's Babe Ruth calling a shot. <laughs> you never know. You never know. My name is Freddie Wong. I play Glenn Close, the bard slash dad rock enthusiast and guitarist. My dad fact this week for Glenn is this. We got Halloween coming up. By the time this episode is out, we'll be a couple days out from the spookiest night of the year. Glenn Close has a... Because <laughs> of families, right? Um, Glenn Close, because of his allegiance to Christmas music, canonically oh. hates Halloween. He hates two Whoa. things. The two things he hates. Halloween's the most rock and roll holiday there is. Uh, he disagrees, actually. Christmas Hanukkah is the most killer one-two <laughs> oh combo. My gosh. Known to it. Nothing rocks harder than Hanukkah. Yes. All of that classic Ozzy Osbourne music that gets played over Hanukkah and Christmas as opposed to Halloween. Well, if Glenn has something to say about it. The other thing he hates more than Halloween, mall Santas. Hates mall Santas because they always harsh his vibe. <laughs> How do they harsh his vibe? Because they're too cool. Because they're there. Yeah, Beth's right. It's just too much alpha energy coming yeah. off of the mall. <laughs> is, that, for- is that a reference to Huey Martinez's fan art? Where Yes. Nice. So Huey, who's been drawing up a storm on the Twitter, did a little non-canon comic that I really enjoyed, which is basically a mall Santa losing his mind and Glenn having to calm him down. But now it's canon. Now it's canon. Yeah. That's right. It's right. canon, baby. My name is Matt Arnold. I play Daryl Wilson, a stay-at-home coach dad. And my dad fact comes from my own brain and not one of our fans. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my you piece god. Of shit. <laughs> that, Matt, that was wow. devastating. Savage. <laughs> On a personal level for me to hear. Ready? Just rip up your character sheet. It's over. I'm just throwing my computer away. Sorry. Oh I my god. To. I am so sad right now. He didn't now. get to eat Grant's face, so he's gonna eat Freddy's. <laughs> I had to do Should it. Should I just I'm make sorry. a new character? <laughs> I'm sorry, Freddy. Yeah, I don't care about like you Freddy's feelings. I care I'll about get, I'll give our you fans. Pain. I guess <laughs> I'll be. I guess I'll be a druid. No, <laughs> we already have a druid. Okay, okay. Well, I apologize. And to continue, I guess ah, me being an asshole is uh, so my dad fact. Daryl Wilson. Well, this is actually really a, a grand fact about how he learned there's no Santa. Because um, Daryl Wilson was so excited to scare his son on Halloween that he got his Santa outfit and he made him all bloody. And then he woke up Grant when he was six years old being like, (laughs) it's Christmas time. And he ran out and there's a bloody Santa. And I screamed and caught him and it went terribly wrong. So I had to explain like 
it was your dad. This is my Santa outfit. There's no one. There's no Santa. And two, <laughs> I ruined your Halloween morning. I'm sorry. Oh my. So that, anyways, that's dark. So, I, I mean, so maybe what happened last episode wasn't that much of a change for him. He's like, this is somehow he's, familiar. He genuinely thought it'd be funny because like his dad scared him. He's like, I'm like, he really likes Halloween. He likes getting scary. He's like, oh, this is gonna be really funny. It's gonna be scary. But uh, yeah. I do want to call out that Matt basically stole his dad fact from a Frasier episode where really? Frasier dresses up as a spooky clown to scare his dad. Oh, and he gives his dad a heart attack. Yeah, oh my man. gosh, yes. Oh shit. Well, uh, there's a little bit of Santa Claus in there too. Yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Well, there's I, I steal from the best. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? Greetings. Happy Halloween. I'm Will Campos. I play Henry Oak, the spookiest dad of them all, who's a granola munching, bone crunching, <laughs> grave digging, <laughs> nature druid dad. Birkin uh, shocks on his feet. Oh, oh. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, my Halloween themed dad fact this week is that Henry goes all out on the haunted house with Mercedes O'Garcia every year. They oh, have like cool. They have yes. some like legit creepy stuff that they put up and like witches in the windows and like they really go all out on it. It's very crafty. It's very witchy and fun. But none of the kids come up to the house and he thinks it's because they did such a good job scaring oh, them. Oh my God. But this in is so reality, <laughs> it's because they have the fucking wackest <laughs> snacks. Yeah, man. Yeah. On the oh, block, man. it's yep. all like they got healthy snacks. It's like cucumbers with little witch hats on them, Ugh. and like you know cauliflower ghosts. It's no good. Ugh. It's oh, like no not good. even packaged. Like nobody would trust it. Cauliflower <laughs> ghost. That's the name of my band. <laughs> Can I throw another Halloween dad fact there? Because yes. you actually reminded me of one that I thought of earlier this week and I forgot about until this very moment. Fire away. It's about Halloween candy. You know that uh, story about THC laced Halloween candy showing oh, up? Oh, no. Guess who might have been the source of that <laughs> accidentally Jeez. one year in San Dimas and why the local news always seems to cover that story? Because Glenn mixed up his chocolate with the band's chocolate and uh, it ended up being not a good thing. That's great. Hi, my name is Beth May and I play Ron Stampler. A spooky person. <laughs> Actually, the spookiest thing one can be in this Step world. Dead. A stepfather. Ron is objectively the spookiest dad. Yeah. I don't know why I, I tried to. I definitely agree. And my dad fact this week is that although, as we've seen, Ron is actually not easily sort of rattled by, like, scary. I mean, there's been scary things in this <laughs> podcast. There have been things that I've been scared of in this podcast. But as a committed role player, I had to play as if Ron was not scared. <laughs> um, but... But in the context of Halloween, Ron is scared of everything. So it's like if you say like boo and it's related to Halloween, Ron is immediately like really scared. Or if it's like a scary movie, if it's like in the context of anything fictional, he's like very, very frightened. But if something real and dangerous is happening right in front of him, he's like, that's fine. Wow. So he's got a very overactive imagination. I guess, yeah. Our friend Chris is like that. He cannot watch any scary movies. I remember him telling me one time that he tried to watch the beginning of like Candyman 3. <laughs> And he was like, the scene at the beginning of this Candyman movie, it's like a professor like talking about the Candyman myth and what happened in the last two movies. And he just started describing in like a well-lit classroom <laughs> how scary Candyman was. And he was like, well, I had to turn the movie off and I couldn't oh sleep my gosh. for two days. <laughs> I'm kind of the same way, but I love it. I am such a glutton for Halloween scary <laughs> punishment. Nothing pleases me more than scary things. Boo. <gasps> ah! <laughs> don't be scared. It's me, your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, please, please don't be scared. Please, please don't be scared. Hey, come back. Come back. <laughs> I'm your daddy master. I'm Anthony Birch. Uh, the first thing that I ever went as for Halloween was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, and I had a, a green... One? What? Which one? Oh, make Michelangelo, obviously. The ah. pizza. The pizza chucks. The pizza a man boy. after my own heart. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of green face paint on myself. And I think if there are any pictures that remain, it probably looks very problematic because of like, the, the way the lighting turns out. But like, yeah. it'd be pretty easy and to and Photoshop getting, that. Anthony's yeah. getting out ahead of this one early. <laughs> 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 to a it color, was a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> to, a, uh, <laughs> to a colorblind person, Anthony, you are like super problematic, right? Like, yeah, I am, like, I am colorblind. colorblind. So when I look at that picture, I go like, that's just blackface. That's no good. <laughs> <laughs> that's no good. Oh, that's a good that's a good excuse for you. It's like oh, I thought oh, no, it was, was green. Color. I thought it was green. I'm, yeah, I'm literally just colorblind. I'm sorry, everybody. That's the old judo move. <laughs> Actually, you're the racist one. <laughs> All of you are level six, by the way. Yay! Yay. Ding. Okay, so when we last left you, you had once again caused irreparable harm to the psyche of one of your children. Irreparable. I mean, yeah, irreparable. We'll see. <laughs> so basically, four nights, the tournament is now over. Is it a fanfare? Um, 
So you're standing around and you see some fireworks go off. It's a title that actually doesn't make any sense, but it became so popular that it just stuck. And, yeah. you know, now it just is the thing. Has nothing to do with the actual gameplay, really. <laughs> so the gas that you hear hissing around you begins to die down. The sky around you begins to sort of dissolve. And you can see that there is... Oh, um, man, this is a simulation. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> the dome sort of dissolves, and you can see a bunch of goblins basically just hand-cranking little <laughs> weird generators <laughs> around the circumference of oh, the map. I wave at one. <laughs> it's too busy cranking. It can't. It has no time for you. I guess you guys can either just sort of sit there and wait for somebody to come to you with your prizes, <laughs> or you can leave. It's up to you. We sit here and we wait for the... No, we're standing punch. around. Fuck <laughs> this. I got like so much hit point damage. I got came up from being dead. I'm just hanging out. And I'm too cool and important to go find a prize. Hey, I, prize know, I, I know we've done this like four times, but like I'm fine. Just if you, any of you are wondering, like I'm, I'm okay with, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with it. Oh, right. We should check it. doesn't feel it. like... It feels kind of weird to talk about because like you all went through it, but yeah, yeah I'm okay. Uh, Daryl, I, I do want to check check in. You're right. Just because we all went through it and you knew it was coming doesn't mean it's not hard to see your son disappear into a puff of purple smoke, especially when it seems like the kind of last interaction you had with him was like him stifling his feelings. And it's kind of jacked weird. up that we weren't able to get that right after like four. I'm not okay. That's a huge step. Yeah, I'm just letting you guys know. I thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. It's okay that it's not okay. All right. Could I have That's your enough. prize? Uh, yeah, what prizes do we get? Oh, I thought we get trophies or something, and we, it might be like us, like in little poses on the trophies, like doing cool things. Oh, you like me, me on my little stilts next to a big trophy. This is Ron Stampler, he won with other dads. So, you want you want a trophy with me on it? Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, I was hoping maybe I could just get like two, like various poses of me, Ron Stampler, <laughs> we'll on different them. trophies. Um, uh, so as you're talking about this, the biggest dog you've ever seen comes uh, <gasps> ambling up to you. Uh, whatever oh your favorite kind of dog is, oh, that's man, what like, you see him Like as. on the shirts I used to wear. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, I had big dog shirts as well. <laughs> if you can't run with the big dog, stay off the porch. Wait, just, <laughs> just to clarify, this dog looks different to all of us? Yes, whatever your favorite breed of dog is, that's what you see. You see the largest well, version of it. My favorite dog is clearly a dog from a big dog shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the problem that I'm experiencing right now is that like Ron would see the dog as a hug, like, you know, a pug, a mix. pug hug. but yeah. Beth is really into sort of like shepherdy mutt things, like sort of collie ish adjacent, ah, the old role play, or is it your character? Or is it you question? And there's a stark divide here in this particular example. You gotta try to stay true to the character, Beth. Okay. It's a hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it has around its neck a bunch of trophies and it comes to all of you and it kneels over and only the first place trophy snaps from its neck and falls to the ground. I, why don't I hug it? Can I, can I yeah. roll to pet the dog? Go ahead and roll. Roll to pet the dog. I'm going to call you Grant and I hug him really tight. Whoa. Roll a d20, Matt, to pet the dog. Did Daryl just say he's going to call this dog Grant? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, Henry, I think he's kind of not Whoa. as okay. I got a nine. You got a nine? What'd you get? I got a five. I'm sorry, dog. I wish I could have <laughs> pet you better. It immediately dodges out of the way. Like, it's not its job to be loved. Its job is to deliver these trophies, and you're going to distract Henry him. Henry scoffs and goes, that's dogs for you. <laughs> Daryl uh, starts crying. <laughs> Daryl's crying. Whoa, Daryl. <laughs> just, just start crying. Daryl, Just, just hey, holding hey, this hey, trophy. Hey, hey man. Hey, it's okay. I, I give Daryl a big hug. Hey, Daryl, what's going on, man? Just talk to me, okay? Uh, I just shouldn't have really named that dog Grant before I knew whether or not he was going <laughs> to let me hug him. That really... <laughs> Oh shit, that's very good. Oh, no. Daryl, just... Daryl, you can call me Grant. Uh, that's going to be a little... I appreciate it. You Sorry, I just had to Grant get that out for a little I'll bit. I'll let you pat my head. It's okay, man. Let's all just, I just you know, want somebody to pat my head. No, that's okay, Ron. How about just a big group hug? Okay. Can we get a group hug over Let's here? Let's get a big group hug. Someone pat Ron's head in the group hug. I'll pat Ron's head. Oh, thanks. Now, that's not a dad huddle. It's a dad huggle. Oh. Oh, that's like kind of that. nice. Hey. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I just needed to let a little bit out. Thanks, guys. Okay, well, next time, if you want to let a little more out, you just let us know, and or just go ahead and do it. It's okay. okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, you sure? Yeah, I'm good. You, where, where are these trophies? That yeah. was good. I'm, I'm, yeah. What do these trophies look like? So the trophy looks exactly like the 150cc cup trophy from <laughs> Mario Kart 64. I'm pulling up a reference image. Uh, and inside of it, you can see an amulet. 
And that is the first place prize. While you're maybe looking at that, the dog goes to CERN. It goes to the Githserai that was laughing at you guys Zendaya. from his tower. Zendaya. It goes to Zendaya and it goes to the hotties and it drops off the second, third and fourth place prizes respectively. So you guys get an amulet. A CERN seems to get a pretty large staff that's like ice on the bottom and fire on the top. It's like a Q-tip that you used half of. Yikes. The <laughs> Zendaya gets a deck of cards and the hotties get a pretty sizable bag of gold. Oh. oh, hey, some gold for the hotties. Wow. Wait, wait, third place got a deck of many things? Yeah. I guess we kind of overshot it. We would have had to, you know, probably try to yeah. do tradesies or something. Let's uh, uh, let's do an investigation. What's the deal with this amulet? This amulet, yeah. Go ahead and roll investigation. I mean, you guys won't tell us what we got? 15. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't they know? Out? This yeah. dog. Hey, what do we win? Actually, actually, actually yeah. <laughs> dog, hey, dog. Dog might as well explain it <laughs> to you. Dog. dog looks directly at you and goes, that is the amulet of proof oh, against shit, detection name, and location. I could hear I you, dog, because Glenn dog. was talking. What's your name, dog? The bounty hunter. <laughs> You know what? Yeah. Please. My name is the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> Aww. 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 This is an amulet of proof against detection and location. Uh, so while wearing this amulet, you're hidden from divination magic. You cannot be targeted by such magic or perceived through magical scrying sensors. Cool. Like everybody or like just the person wearing it? Just the person or thing wearing it. Hey, I mean, there's question. four of us. Could we get like four of these? Well, no, but you could like, if you were like in a room or in a the behemoth that you came in on, you could put that on that. And then what do these other mm. gifts do? What do the other ones it, do? What does it look like? Does it look like fuzzy dice? Does it look like fuzzy, dice? <laughs> look like fuzzy dice or a little pine tree? It looks like a cool amulet with like a closed eye hieroglyph on it. It's an actual D&D &D item. <laughs> I like so, that. Sorry, I everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, 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 this podcast sucks. I would Man. still hang it over the rear view. Yeah. If we get like a big rope and tie it around all of us, will we all be stealthy? Uh, I don't know. Nobody's ever tried to do that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would probably try it and then you probably have to roll for it. But You're very knowledgeable for can a dog. You roll, dog. Can you roll for something? Can you roll over roll for over, something? Roll over, roll oh. over. No. <laughs> roll persuasion. <laughs> You walked into the wrong room, motherfucker. Because <laughs> a level six Glenn Close gets a plus nine on persuasion checks. That's 12 plus nine, bitch. So you did a 21? 21. So he immediately goes like, oh, and rolls over, like almost against his will. And then he stands up and immediately looks up embarrassed about himself. He's like, that's hey, humiliating. What a good boy. That's humiliating. Mm, I don't think it's cool to treat the dog like that, Glenn. I want, I'd like to persuade Henry that it is, in fact, <laughs> cool to treat the dog like that. <laughs> Henry, roll a pose. Uh, is there a wisdom check? You. you roll wisdom against his perception. Roll Whoever wisdom. loses or do I has do to roll over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you got, so you got lucky because I got a three plus nine, 12. So it's mm. about coin flip here. I got a 15. Fuck you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I was almost convinced that it was cool. I'm like, oh, man, no, it's not cool. It's a sentry being, Glenn. Oh. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, he goes, yeah. <laughs> Sack of shit. You seem like a super smart, knowledgeable dog, uh, dog the bounty hunter. Uh, what's your deal? Like, where do you come from? Uh, I'm around here. I used to like help dig out the mines and stuff like that because I'm strong and I could carry people out and stuff. But now they kind of just have me give up the trophies, which is a lot safer. Honestly, it's done a lot for my, my quality of life. Health. Yeah. Nice. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm way better off. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. You want to like come with us? Yeah. Do you want to go on a cool adventure? We could use like a, a cool ride? dog. Car uh, ride? You want to go I mean, car ride? I, I mean, <laughs> roll, roll persuasion. <laughs> dog, you can stick your head out of the van. What are you doing giving us a dog to play with? Um, <laughs> I'm an idiot, apparently. I, I got a 15. You got a 15, all right. <laughs> He's like, we, no, I got a pretty good gig here. Okay. Oh. No, okay. All right, well. I don't know. If you wanted to, like, buy me, I guess you could, but I can't just. I'm not going to buy you. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. We adopt, don't but, shop. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me for trying to negotiate, I guess, but all right. CERN, you got the thermostaff which was created by Robert Moore, a listener of the podcast. Oh, cool. Um, the thermostaff is a tall thermometer-looking magic staff that controls the temperature in any area, and it can Holy only be used shit. by a dad. Holy shit. Oh, my gosh. Ooh. Now, within Ooh. reason, you can't immediately Ooh. make it like the surface of the sun, but you can that's like... A little hey, hey, but that's like, a little insensitive, dog. I know that your thing is like telling it straight, but it is a little insensitive. This guy did lose his kids. Oh, sorry, my bad. My bad. Saren's like, I don't fucking need this then. Clearly, clearly um, I can't use this. Somebody oh. want to trade me? Somebody want to go trade these? All four dads nod slowly. <laughs> <laughs> the dog and bounty hunter turns to the gifts arise and diet and says, you got to deck many things, obviously. Um, <laughs> and the gifts arise like, yes, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I'd always planned to be at exactly third place. Uh, and then uh, the hotties are like, you just get a bunch of money. And they're like, yeah, that's also what we wanted. Hooray. 
And then Yeet does a kickflip. Who's the Z person again? He gets his eye. His name is Zendaya. Zendaya. And is he evil? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and these guys just tell you if he's evil. <laughs> hey, Matt, when you walk down the street and you get coffee, do you look at the bracelet? I like, wanna, is this person hey, hey, are evil? you evil? I'm going to perceive whether or not he's evil. Why don't you roll investigation? Hey, buddy, uh... Daryl Wilson here. Nice to meet you. I put out my hand. And through the handshake. You're like Bruce Willis and Unbreakable. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I put out my hand. Great game. Great game, buddy. He looks you up and down and goes, yes, it was. And shakes your hand. <laughs> yeah, we got a pretty cool amulet. Probably the best thing. That deck sounds pretty cool, I guess. I got a 13 investigation. Yeah, you can tell this guy is probably not great. Uh, <laughs> this looks like a dude that has made a lot of his money by fighting people and killing people. You don't know if he's evil or not, but you know he's definitely a rowdy boy. Crazy surviving this whole thing. What, what are you planning on doing after this? Like, especially with that deck of many things they got there. Oh, oh they, with this sweet baby, I'm going to arrange a, a large number of slaves that I will purchase. Mm. Each one of them will individually draw a card, and I will be entitled to half of whatever they get if it's something I like. That's really smart. <laughs> Guys, that's really, just want to point out, that's really smart. Is that Frey saying that or Glenn saying Both. that? Both. <laughs> that's really clever, no, man. That's Glenn. a way to get, oh, what? No, it's, uh, it's bad, though. It's bad, though. I'm just, uh, it is. It's not that bad. One of the slaves is going to potentially get a lot of money. It's both bad and clever. What, what happened? But there's one that's like a wish. So how do you do like half a wish? Oh, I'll just uh, make sure to have some sort of... Le I don't know why I'm telling you all this. I won. I don't feel like I need to explain myself to Oh, no, it's just super cool. We're just both competitors. I just thought, uh, you know, I, mean, I just want to know what you're doing. I mean, technically, we won. Uh, I, I won in the way that I won. And being number one, you know, we have a saying where I come from in the Forgotten Realms. So there's just the first is the worst, second's the best, <laughs> and third is the nerd with the hairy chest. And that's me. And he reveals a chest full of <laughs> luscious hair. So, so much hair. fucking hair. So you hear footsteps approaching hurriedly. And you see Erin O'Neill running up to you. Her face is as white as a sheet. And she goes, I saw through the, through the leaf. Erin. Hey, what's up? What's going on? You okay? I saw Come through the- Congratulate us on our victory, huh? Through the, through the time of face spell, I saw what happened to the- I'd only heard it back in, in Nodorkapurte, but here I fucking saw- uh, You gotta promise me, whatever happens, you don't- Whoever is taking your kids, you can't fight them. Huh? What do you mean? The, what I've- But that's the, like what we're good at. <laughs> You, this is what you're certainly very I like very to persuade Aaron that I'm actually oh good at fighting. God. Go ahead, you piece of I shit. Roll a <laughs> I roll a 22. God damn it. 13 like, plus 9. You are amazing at fighting. Specifically, Glenn, you are very good at fighting, weirdly. Aaron, we, would, Aaron we would burn this whole world down to find our kids. I'm not saying don't find your kids. I'm saying... Aaron, I, Aaron, yeah. take a breath. It's okay. We won. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Are, are you being chased? Is something going to happen right now? Are yeah. we in trouble? I mean, well, also, yeah, the cops are coming. Remember I told you that the cop, uh, when you got in, the cops are coming. <laughs> the slow it follows cops that like, take, <laughs> that take a hey, long time. Can we do time. a dad total plus Aaron? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, Aaron, do you think you could steal the tech of many things from that guy? Because he seems like he bad news. He sucks bad, bad. She looks over at the guy and the guy's just watching you and he like waves. Hey, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> uh, she's like, she's I'm, not, of ours. I'm not really stealthy. I don't, I don't know what I could. We should sneak after this guy and steal that deck. Hey, sir, enter the thing. Yeah, what's up? Hey, man. Hey buddy. What How is CERN wearing? Uh, CERN is wearing suspenders. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is actually great. Is he wearing anything else? Uh, it's a pair of suspenders? He's got like a little hole in the pants so his like, tail so, comes so out? So he can poot. Yeah, and, and for his tail. Because he was planning on just wearing the armor the whole time. Uh, so this is like okay. you, you caught him with CERN. his undershirt on, hey, basically. Hey, CERN, I've got this idea. So, okay, you've got that staff thing that, that changes the temperature. And I was wondering if I could put on your little suspenders. I'll give you a pair of pants in exchange. Then I'll use the staff to appear cold-blooded, saddle up to Zendaya, and I'll steal the deck of many things. S sorry, Ron, just what part of that requires you to be uh, cold-blooded? I just What part of it requires you to wear his <laughs> pants? <laughs> okay, well, they'll think I'm CERN. Of course, Zendaya thinks that we're going to want the deck of many things, but CERN, he's not going to suspect. And if I'm cold... Then I will be a reptilian like Lizard Boy Scales Can from I, oh, So, so, no, I'm saying, so your plan is to disguise yourself as me? Yeah. Why is that any better than you just being you? <laughs> I don't know. I think um, I always admired your physique, the scales, the... You know, guys, the, I think I, I'm okay with... I think Ron's maybe got a point here. Maybe we just see how it happens. Actually, and maybe we use this as a distraction. Actually, Ron is just going to walk... Actually, Ron is just going to walk away from the huddle and see if he can get the, the deck of many things. Wait, the, do you try to slip away without us noticing? Yeah, I'll be stealthy to you guys. <laughs> Go ahead and roll stealth to see if they notice that you're still in the huddle or not. While you're talking, so it's a disadvantage. 
I've got plus eight stealth and I got a 16. So that's wild. You got a 24 stealth? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely roll again because okay. disadvantage. Damn it. I got a 13. So I still like got like, yeah, 21. 21. Yeah. So yeah. While you t while you're talking about how good an idea this is, you slowly sort of disappear out of the conversation. And I guess people pay so little attention to the shit that you say <laughs> that, that, that nobody noticed. Not even CERN. I don't know, guys. I guess Zendaya. What? Hi. Um. Could I have that deck? Roll persuasion. For you, Ron, but it feels like a good. Five. Idea. You know, my point, like, I no. Do you want to see a magic trick? No <laughs> Are you trying to beat me up and steal my deck? No, 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 I, I want to show you a magic no, trick, but it's a card and trick and is the thing. Like <laughs> <laughs> Roll persuasion again, but with disadvantage. Well, I just crit failed, so, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't think I will be. In fact, I think I'm going to be on my way. You go ahead and tell your friends uh, that, that it was a good game. Thanks for killing off that chimera, and I will bid you adieu. And he starts to walk away. Um, um, it's a shame that you're walking away because uh, my card tricks are nothing compared to the other other dads, the other dads, Run. guys, uh, show Zendaya your card tricks. You uh, know, wink, wink, your card tricks. Uh, uh, oh. Why did you just say wink twice? Uh, um, I do a bit called wink, wink. Yes, yes. And it's before he does his incredible card trick. If somebody wants to try to roll persuasion to make this guy give a fuck about card tricks, you feel free. I feel like Henry just tried to, but right. unfortunately, Henry doesn't have a plus nine persuasion, so we'll see what happens. And I got a 10. 10's not going to do it. Hey, Z-Man, we're not going to let you walk away with that deck of many things. We're not really cool on the whole uh, on you killing slaves oh, sort of right. thing. Roll intimidate. With advantage because you guys were number one and you killed the most people. I got a 21. Whoa! I mean, you saw what we did to Chimera, and that wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, in fact, I forgot that I could attack twice. I yeah, just man. learned that on level five. <laughs> it was like with my left hand tied behind my back. So I'm saying, I'm not, I don't want to cause you a problem. I'm just saying, like, you know, maybe we just cut a deal and just make this easy for everybody. So he stops and he turns around, pivoting on one foot, and goes like, that is a very fair point. It's, it's decidedly against the rules of Four Nights, as I'm sure the, dog, the bounty hunter would be happy to tell you. And uh, Dog turns to you and is like, we don't like people to kill each other for the prizes after. It's like, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole I mean, thing. No, it's like, you can't really make rules of what we do after the game. What are you going to do? I Tell mean, me what yeah, you do after the game? It's a gentle suggestion not to it's do. It's going to be a no back. from me, Dog. Is there, <laughs> 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 and you don't have a rule that you can't use the prizes to kill slaves? No. Your rules are dumb. Yeah, I mean. S sorry, Dog. Oh. Don't, I would like to persuade Dog that he's a good boy. <laughs> You roll a 20. You're a good boy. Oh, that's good Does to his know. tail wag? His tail wags a little oh. bit. It's slow, but it's a very big tail. So it's like <laughs> people behind him, you can see their hair get blown back. <laughs> so Z-Man, what's up? I would happily trade your amulet for the deck. That feels fair. I think we can do that. Yeah, I mean, the, hey, to be fair, the amulet doesn't seem that cool. I mean, there's a library looking for us magically. I right? do, I do want to make it known to the group that when druids turn level six, they go through a very special change in their body, Puberty. <laughs> and I have a spell called Hearth of the Moonlight and Shadow, which means that during a short or long rest, I can touch a point in space and create an invisible thirty foot sphere that grants a. Plus five bonus to stealth and perception checks while within it, and light from open flames from within it can't be seen. Wow. So cool. I get to make like a little bubble when we rest. That's cool. So, you know, like if we need to hide the van for a while, like I can make a little bubble. Like you upgrade the camera. That's fabulous. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, look, I don't want to make decisions for all the dads. Like, if we really think we need the amulet more, but I'm really not cool with this guy taking the well, so this whole. So, Aaron death. says, like, well, just so you know, whatever magic it was that took the kid. That's really, really powerful stuff. Like it's, that's stuff that I could never do. And that amulet would almost certainly protect you from those, whatever forces that are, uh, that is seeing you. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're wait, I got an idea. I walk up to Zendaya. I'm like, Zendaya, you look like a musical fellow. Why don't you retire right now with this? And I unsling the guitar. Uh, oh. the battle Acts of Hatred. The battle Acts of Hatred. And I say, here's the thing. This is the most sonorous guitar in all the land. You just got to strum it hard, baby. And uh, it'll, uh, you know, it's worth a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was autographed by Eric Clapton. <laughs> it was autographed by, hi, I'm Ron. And I, I, behind my head, I'm like, Ron, like, sharpie this. <laughs> and I'm like, pointing at the back <laughs> of it. Don't you know, hi, I'm Ron, the legendary folk rock troubadour? Does anybody have a, a sharpie? I have heard of hi, I'm Ron. I never heard them live, but I've, I've heard they're pretty cool. You autographed it in blood. Oh, just put cut your finger. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Christopher walking back there. <laughs> I, I like sign. Okay, so Ron. roll persuasion. 
Oh my god! As you try to shove this oh, bloody. Let me just do a quick. Oh, jeez, sorry. Seventeen plus nine. How oh does that work? Oh my god! You're so insufferable now. <laughs> yeah. This is the worst. He takes it from you, and he's going to roll an Arcana check, and he goes like, "Oh, there's a demon in this." Yeah, but the demon like. Oh, well, no, 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 no. That's what we call a plus. I'm very, very big on demon possessed paraphernalia. So not uh, concerned that we took a nuke away from a guy and gave him a machine gun. But like, it's a demon, like. <laughs> It's definitely better I mean, than him doing Darryl, what do you he was want to deal do. with the demon, <laughs> Daryl. No. Do we want the deck or not, man? Yeah, like, I want the deck. I just don't want him to do bad things with it. Well, look, look, I'm taking this thing and I'm giving you the deck. That's the way it is. All right. Or I'm this gonna smash does seem, no, Promise me is, you won't do anything wrong with the demon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like gentleman's, what? Gentleman's honor. <laughs> All right. I promise. I roll a perception. Yeah, go ahead. To see if he's go lying. Ahead. Go ahead, ding dong. <laughs> Crit fail on my perception. I'm like, I think we can trust him, guys. <laughs> I crit fail. <laughs> what? You Double have, crit fail? You have never I've been never more crit failed. Never been more smart in your entire life that somebody's on the fucking level. Man, maybe I was wrong about it. Maybe we should just let him have the deck of many things. Like this guy seems pretty by the mm. pretty by the book. To Henry, this is kind of like the Iran nuclear deal, <laughs> where it's like you know, it's not perfect, but it's better than the alternative. Yeah. No, he's he's like that sounds great to me. So he hands you. The deck of many things. And Anthony, Ooh. by the way, for folks listening, has I a deck. Open. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, so he walks away strumming his guitar, little well, licks of flame coming out of the sides of it, and he's just happy as a clam. Can I pitch something to the DM? Yeah. It feels like what with there being a demon in the guitar and then someone having written their name in blood on the guitar, that it seems like there should be some consequence for that if the demon gets out. That's, like, I'll write that down. That's okay. really good. I don't know what that is. I don't mean to just be like the kid being like, can we have extra homework? But I was like, that's <laughs> interesting. This is a thing to plant. We, yeah, that's a good thing yeah, to plant. That's pull, really good. Like, the, like Ron's name slowly but sinisterly <laughs> gets absorbed by the guitar yeah. as it's, yeah. So it'd be like, even like as it's going away, you see like Ron's signature glow a little bit. It like, and yeah, like, it like flames and like it outlines itself in flame and then bursts away into nothingness and it disappears from the I'm guitar. Sure it's like it's not a real signature, too. I'm sure it's just like his name. Like he doesn't like Ron. sign things. It just says just perfectly Ron. printed wrong. Yeah. Daryl has the worst luck with blood. <laughs> Aaron's like, so yeah, so congratulations on, on the deck and stuff like that, but Thank we should you. probably... Hey, uh, Henry, why don't you, no, no offense to Ron or Glenn here, but and I got I got Butterfingers, so why don't you hold on to the deck? I, hey. I, you're, it was, I'm just saying he seems like the most responsible. My He's the... Uh, Glenn, really? You want to hold this? Yes. Oh my God. Anthony's giving me the deck. Oh my God. So I can't look at any of these, right? No, I mean, they're just images that don't, like, you'll, you'll, you'll go ahead and draw one. Okay, all right. Wait. No, no. <laughs> it's me, Scam Lightning. <laughs> Will Campos, out of character, is drawing okay, one. Okay, Will, not Henry, is drawing. I'm actually scared right now to be holding this deck. Okay, yeah, so I got like a picture of a jester. Oh, so it's like, oh, you drew the jester. The jester right, means X, Y, Z. And I have these three cards here that say the jester means X, Y, Z. Okay. So I guess it's up because I've, I've tried to explain to you guys what they are before, and you all have kind of been like, no, 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 it's don't tell about, me. It's so all I about just how you want to canonically you. establish it. Okay. It feels like it's a mythical item that other characters have heard rumors about. Yes. You know? Yeah, it feels like in the game we wouldn't know what I it mean, is. Nobody's we, told us. No one's told us. Yeah, we would have yeah. to Yeah, ask the daddies someone, wouldn't right? know. But like, so Aaron and Cern and, and everybody else who's in the Forgotten Realms knows about the deck of many things. They're an uncommon item, but they're fairly well known. So I take the deck from Daryl and I kind of look at it. I'm like very nervous about this deck. So I'm going to go ahead. Henry pulls out. He had one spare condo oh my God. <laughs> in his back pocket this whole time. Man, what a sacrifice. Yeah. And, it's the um, wallet one. It's the wallet condom. It's, it's been in there expired. since high school prom. No. Um, it's only 99.9% effective by the way so be careful <laughs> you know why that is right yeah it's, 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 it's only it's that be, yeah it's like because people are idiots awful. Like, people, are just dumb asses. Dumb. people are dumb henry can spray some spermicidal lubricant on this so that it's extra <laughs> not gonna let the God. deck of many things get out just remember that when you do draw the cards out of there that they're all juicy and it's gross <laughs> well, you should put lube on the inside and the outside I, okay just to be clear henry's not lubing up the condom <laughs> With the deck of many things. In. I gotta lube up the deck so I can draw better. If you just have spermicidal lube, though, in the Forgotten Realms, I feel like that's a magical item. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are we, hey, Henry, why are we not selling this? Everywhere now, we Henry go, does not. All right, I, I need to walk this back. Henry brought the condoms for their water storage capabilities. He did, he did not bring sperma lube with. Actually, eh, <laughs> to Mercedes think, like, wasn't coming with them, so what would he been I guess that's for? true. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. They don't. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Maybe fair Bruce enough. did call that would get sexy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Where are we? Okay, so Aaron, Aaron sees your trepidation as you drop them into the condom. She goes like, so generally what you need to know about the deck of many things. He didn't drop it into the condom. He stretched the condom. <laughs> he, and, he, and, he held it. In my mind, he was like, yeah, he held on. the cards in his mouth and then like opened it up and, <laughs> <laughs> and bloop, just dropped it right in. No, 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 no. They're, ma- they're he, magnums. He held the cards firmly at the base and in a rolling action, <laughs> rolled the condom. He kept some air at the top so it didn't <laughs> pop. <laughs> He put the condom in his mouth. <laughs> I can tie the deck of many things into a cherry stem in my mouth. You want to see? So Aaron goes, are you guys done? <laughs> Just canonically, that's all you were saying. So Aaron says, it's slightly worse than half and half odds of drawing something from the deck. It'll either do something that's really insanely bad that'll change your life forever and ruin everything, mm. or it'll make you rich beyond your wildest dreams, or it'll make you really, really powerful, or as you all know, and as I'm sure the reason everybody wants a deck of many things is there's a one in 20 something chance of getting a wish where you can undo some horrible thing that happened. Would you draw from the deck, Aaron? Absolutely not. No way. Huh. Whoa. Here's a question. My life's fucking great. We had a bad experience with a pyramid and a bag of beans a while ago. So CERN starts crying. (laughs) Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I go and I I, I put my arm around CERN. Actually, a lot of people had a bad experience (laughs) with a pyramid and a bag of beans. Henry keeps forgetting about CERN when he brings that up. Maybe you've heard of this one, Aaron. It must have been pretty big news in these realms. The the point isn't the pyramid. The, the, The point is... Uh, what would happen if we get, like, how does the drawing of it work? Can you only do it one at a time? If I flipped over all the cards and drew them all, like, how does that work? I will read you exactly what it says on uh, the instruction thing I have here. You must declare how many cards you intend to draw and then draw them randomly. Any cards drawn in excess of this number have no effect. Uh, mm. Otherwise, the second that you draw the card from the deck, it's magic takes effect. So you can't like draw five and then go like, cool, I want to do the wish first and then like deal with the other one. So it's as you draw them. You must draw each card no more than one hour after the previous draw. If you fail to draw the chosen number, the remaining number of cards fly from the deck on their own and take effect all at once. Oh, interesting. Wait, sorry, what? So if you say, hey, I'm going to draw five cards and you only draw three and you can't draw the remaining two, then the remaining two just come out of the deck and then happen on their own simultaneously. Okay. Um, once a card is drawn, it fades from existence. Unless a card is the fool or the jester, the card reappears in the deck, making it possible to draw it twice. Whoa. And all of the effects take place one by one? Exactly. Like in whatever order they... So are there more than one decks of many things? Yeah, they're rare, but they're not so rare that you couldn't conceivably make them the third place prize in a death match. <laughs> could, you, could you wish for more wishes? Sorry, it's not. it turns out I'm, I'm wrong. It wasn't wish. That's what I was thinking of. It's, it allows you to avoid or erase one event as if it never happened. Oh, okay. It's a little oh, bit more specific than that. Oh, God. Because, yeah, I was like, this is an incredibly powerful thing. Oh, I lied. I lied again. So there is the erasure thing. And then there's also, it's even stronger than I thought. If you draw the moon card, you gain the ability to cast the wish spell 1d3 times. Whoa. Ooh. And then you can wish for whatever you want. So let me look up the wish I spell. Wish I wish this 1d3 I, was a 1d10,000. <laughs> So according to the D&D compendium, Wish is the mightiest spell a mortal creature can cast. Whoa. The basic use of this spell is to duplicate any spell of 8th level or lower. It says, like, alternately, you can create a bunch of effects of your choice, and then it gives you a bunch of really boring shit. So we're just going to say, like, you can wish something as long as I don't go fuck you. That'll ruin the podcast forever. It'll happen. All right. As a writer's room, we will decide if the wish takes effect or not. Whoa. Anthony just gave us a loaded gun here. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we shouldn't really use it right now. I'm too dangerous. dangerous. Hey, yeah. uh, Henry, you got some bright eyes over there. Are you sure you can hold on to that deck without yeah, pulling? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got it. I got it. Keep it in the I condom, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I don't hear its awesome power whispering to me silently in my ears. So I, I pocket it and zip it up in my fanny pack. As you begin to pocket it, CERN reaches out for it and he goes like, could I? Could I? Could you what? Could I have it? Could you you want the deck, CERN? Uh huh. What are you What are you gonna do with it? Oh, I mean, I, I I can kind of figure what you're gonna do with yeah, it. Yeah, I don't have anything to lose, so I would just like draw all the cards. Oh, well, you don't no, want to draw all of Well, here's the thing, though. Statistically, hey, Aaron, is there a mathematician in this world? And she goes, "Oh yeah, let me go find her." Oh, uh, you're looking at her, and oh, she nice. points at herself with both thumbs, and she goes, "Garden magic and math magic are my two specialties." Uh, CERN, you want to draw all the cards? Wait, you can keep choosing to draw one, right? I think it's literally you only get to draw you at get your one entire chance. life once. You get one go oh, at it. Okay, that's it. Oh, okay. 
So the only way to guarantee that you get the wish is to say I draw them. And that's not even a guarantee because and Aaron's saying it's not even a guarantee because again, they resolve one at a time. So if something really bad shows up and your body is incapable of saying whatever the hell your wish is by the time that even pops up, then it just gets yes, wasted. I have, essentially. I have I have a I have a thought for yeah. CERN. Okay, CERN. I'm scared of doing this, CERN, because I do think you have a lot to live for, but I don't I'm not in your shoes. And, you know, I don't want to see you throw your life away over something dangerous. But if you are going to do something dangerous, you need to get it right. So here's what I'm going to suggest. If you say you're going to draw all the cards and then you only draw one and refuse to draw any others, the rest of the cards will all explode and activate simultaneously, which means in theory, you could use your wishes in the instant that everything happens to undo everything else and maybe get your kids. Probably to undo the fact that you... uh Drew that you many drew cards. the cards? You cannot wish away the fact that you drew that many cards because okay. the idea is that the deck is so powerful, you can't use a wish that's that powerful to try to override the power of the thing that you're doing. Okay. I'll be honest, I don't. This is hard. We to need like a character of- who's like a deck of many things lawyer, by the way. <laughs> like, who's like an attorney who specifically like motorcycle accidents who only works with the deck of many things. <laughs> There's a billboard. It's like, <laughs> got a deck of many things. <laughs> were you screwed out of the number of draws that you were uh, contractually <laughs> obligated to? If he draws all of the decks and then wishes that we never came to the Forgotten Realms, mm-hmm. like his kids would be alive. Yeah. That's true. But listen, CERN. The only thing worse than what you're going through right now would be for you to be immobile, paralyzed, knowing that you would have drawn like wish or something and you couldn't change it because you drew too many or whatever, man. Here's my thought. Don't do it right now. Let's get our bearings a little bit. Let's maybe talk to a deck of anything's things lawyer and go about this a smart way, man. As Daryl says, if you're going to do something, you got to do it right. Well, was, Henry said that. What Daryl was going to say is I just don't think we should do it. I hate to be the wet blanket, but what happened happened, man. There's no way to change it. We don't know what happened because of that. I, I mean, maybe I'm being selfish, but I feel like if we didn't do that pyramid, we probably would have died. And if we died, then they would have called out. They could have called the doodler. And maybe the whole universe dies. We don't know what the hell is happening. Like, I don't think, no, there's I don't think it's healthy. To, CERN man. doesn't look at you, but he tenses up a little bit. He's like, I appreciate what you're saying, but don't fucking what happened happened to me, man. Not about Ooh. this. I'm sorry, man, but I don't think we can get I think the it's deck. too dangerous. I, I think we got to. Yeah, sir. You know what Boreanus was up to, right? Yeah. And I believed in it because he wanted to make a better world. And but all what like, if both ways it kills your kids? I mean, what if fucking horses had wings? They do in this universe. <laughs> what, if, <laughs> what if horses didn't have what wings? What if horses didn't have wings? It'd be a shitty world to live in and horses would only have their erotic capabilities as something making them worthwhile. And they'd sell Budweiser. So what do you say? You saying I can't, you saying you won't give me the deck. CERN, I don't like being an asshole, but I can't give you this deck, dude. It's just your, it's. This is either the last conversation we're going to have or you're going to hand me the deck. You're clearly not going to use it. You have stuff to lose. I don't. So you're just going to be walking around with this bomb in your pocket that anybody could take from you and use to do horrible things against you or whatever. Or you can give it to me and I can at least use it and you can be assured that nobody's going to use those wishes to fuck you over or fuck your kids over any of that stuff. I just want to use it for myself. Can, is the deck like, can I destroy it? Typically you can't destroy magic items like that without doing some like special go to Mountain Doom and drop the shit in the shit kind of stuff. Sense. Basically, I don't have my cleaver anymore. Maybe well, if probably you had the cleaver, you could, have, you could have, you could have cut the cards. You could have cut the deck, get it? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, you're not a good... No, 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 no. Sir, you're being I want to hear one word. Yes or no. You're Can I have the deck? Dad huddle, real quick. One second, Sir. I no. no, we can't. Okay. I'll, what what I'll, do you mean? Why not? Yes. Because fuck him. <laughs> yeah, Frankly, no. We I'm not get, no. He doesn't get he doesn't get this. If he wants to do something this rash and stupid and self-destructive, he can do it on his own. He can find another deck. He can find his own deck. I'm not gonna be a part of it. Okay, but there's if there are a lot of other decks out there, then anybody could be doing this at any time and we'd have no say over it. And you know, not all of those things are bad. Ron, I'm not I can't, going Ron, I to can't give, stop. I can't stop him from killing himself. I'm not going to give him the loaded gun. I mean, absolutely. That's exactly where I land I'll, on this. Plus, I'll, like, mathematically, he's talking about a really dumb way of doing it. If you okay, draw all at once. All right, all right, Nate Silver, we fucking get it. <laughs> I'll, I'll go. What I'll, if we give him the deck, but say he can only pick one? I walk away from the huddle to go to CERN. Yeah. Okay. I'm still in the huddle. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ron are one, still in the one huddle. man huddle. <laughs> Sir, and I'm sure this is going to be us parting our ways, buddy, but I can't. We're not going to give you the deck. I Bye. can't give it to you. He just starts walking away. <sighs> you guys know that he's just going to probably compete in this game until he gets it. I don't. That's up to him, man. I can't be responsible for him. Like Daryl said, I'm not going to give him a loaded gun and let him play Russian roulette with it. 
Guys, I think it's just because Grant and the dog, but I'm feeling the waterworks come again because oh Cern's as you leaving. Start, as you start to cry again, you can see Cern for the second time in your life sort of walking into the distance. Around him, an indeterminate number of dudes in blue uniforms stop and they start hassling him and then he just hooks a thumb back over his shoulder Ooh, and they turn and they see you. Oh, dang, Cern, Cern narked on us guys. And they start fucking sprinting at you and you recognize these as the blue coats from Neverwinter, the, the police force of Neverwinter. The oh. lizard is a rat. <laughs> you remember as they're sprinting at you that the last time you were in Neverwinter you killed a lot of people in public, dropped a pyramid on their town, and then very quickly drove away before dealing with the consequences of what you had done. Uh, we run. We run the other well, way. Well, I can't see because my eyes are watery. I'm like, uh, guys, oh, uh, yeah, we gotta go. Cops, what? cops, cops. Oh, oh shit. Fuzz. We got cheese, guys. It's the fuzz. I see the fuzz. Cops are the same every world. So how mm-hmm. are you going to, you're just going to just try to run in the opposite direction? Yeah, where, how far away are we from our van? So you took the uh, Four Knights chariot, yeah, essentially, the, the to get to where you were. You'd have to, like, get back there somehow, uh, and that would probably be a hey, bit Hey, Dog of Bounty Hunter, do you got, like, a, you just leave us here, man? Like, where's, where's our get out of here? There's the shuttle that takes we you back to that bully We are running towards that shuttle right okay. now. Give me a dex roll, everybody. Uh, that is 16 plus 3, 19. Daryl gets a 15. Uh, I got a 15. I got a 19. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So there was a lot of attacks, but only two of you actually got hit. Ron, you're going to take seven damage. Thanks. And Daryl, you take seven damage. Crossbow bolts whistle through the air oh, and no. just barely manage to miss uh, Henry and uh, Clever, I'm trying to catch them, like, cool, like, Matrix style. Like, I'm trying to catch them in midair. Well, you already failed your dexterity throw, so you try to raise one to catch them, and the bolt just hits you in the hand. Ow! Just completely impales your fucking hand. Ooh. Which hand? The Which eyeball hand? hand? That was your non-dominant hand, so no, it would uh. probably puncture your good hand. Damn. Your other hand, the eyeball opens up for a second and goes like, eh, and it closes again. Did Daryl see that? The eye open? Yeah. Guys, there's an eyeball in my hand. We'll talk about it on the chariot. Yeet, kill Odamal. You coming with? Let's go. So Yeet and kill Odamal were too busy looking at their gold, and they look up, and they see you guys are getting chased by the cops. They go, oh, that's fucked up. And for a second, Yeet bigly sees Aaron O'Neill, and he goes, no, fucking no. That's the one that killed my uncle. Fuck you. And she turns back. She goes, fuck you. Your uncle sucks. She goes, fuck you. And then she just like, keeps running. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They're just like saying, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, back at each other as Aaron runs. I guess there's fall. some bad blood between those two, huh? Back to the, uh, the, the birds start attacking Yeet. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, the birds are just fucking pecking at Yeet, and he's like, fuck all of you. Oh, fucking birds. I hate this bullshit. He kick flips away. So you guys get into there the- There goes uh, one cool teen. So you guys jump into one of these shuttles with some of the winged horses attached to it, and the driver on the shuttle is like, so where, where are we headed? Where are we going? Yeah, we'll point. It's right near Bullywogs. It's this. Uh, we got. We got a. Yeah, uh, the area right by Bullywogs. Yeah. We'll point to it. Right. Yeah. We know where the trees are. So he's going to try to take off. Oh man. They are going to shoot at him. Freddie, he... give him an assist by playing some getaway banjo music, like from Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> I pull out the guitar of Indeterminate Origin and I play some chase music. Okay. Like all the Dukes of Hazard, which is one of the uses of Bardic Inspiration. Perfect. Okay. Which so gives they him a D8 to... when he wants to. They continue to stand on the ground and shoot crossbow bolts at you, and they just ping, ping, ping off of the side of the chariot, and like one hits one of the pegasi in the butt, but it's fine. It doesn't. And happen. right as the pegasus kicks into the air, the whole thing freeze frames, and then you hear someone say, <laughs> Them dad boys was in a heap of trouble. <laughs> oh, dad boys, I like it. Okay, so with essentially no problems, the shuttle takes you back to the hey, area. I have a question while we're flying. Yeah, what's up? Hey, Aaron, uh, really quick, I, I, I did see an uh, eyeball in my hand. What? Do you have an eyeball in your hand? Yeah, Did I, I thought it? I saw it before, but I was just really emotional. Glenn checks so. his LSD stash. <laughs> Still there. Hmm. So I wasn't sure, but this second time I definitely saw it. In the hand that the library gave back to me, I saw an eyeball pop out. Do you ever see no, that get, weird? Daryl, let me see your hand. Okay. All right, so I look at Daryl's hand to do some palm reading, which I learned from Mercedes O. Garcia's grandmother, Pilar, which is the name of my grandmother who could do palm reading. Um, That's great. So uh, why don't you roll Arcana, Henry? This should be a plus for that because of all your time communing with crystals, etc. I got a 13. We'll say that's enough for you to know that definitely like this is directly connected to the fact that the library did some shit to his hand. That This is the library's doing. And actually his lifelines are like fucking jacked up and crazy looking like he's got a spiral in the middle of his hand, like where his palm lines are supposed to be. Mm. Go, whoa, dude, was your hand always like this? I don't know. People always say I know you like the back or I don't know my hand people know the well. back of their hands but not the front yeah it's a man palm. you know I think this was the hand that you gave to the library right well, yeah Aaron can you look at it I put my hand out in front of her face <laughs> so Aaron goes like Ugh. yeah that's fucked up you're a witch there's an eyeball in my hand can you make the eyeball I'm a come garden out? and math witch if you had a shrub coming you're out of your palm witch? I could do I talked about that about like, 20 minutes ago literally like a witch yeah. or like you're just like figuratively like you're a witch at math I mean, some, some little column A, little column B. Yeah, why can't it be both, man? A little What's the X-axis, a little hey, the Y-axis. Hey, 
<laughs> What's the square root of 3.5? 1.87082869, dummy. Whoa, Anthony definitely wow. came up with that immediately, immediately and didn't have to look that up. Right off the dome. <laughs> So Aaron says, I guess you did this while I was in the bathroom at the Bullywogs where all, of, all the people that hang out with you go when you go to a Bullywogs and they disappear for I a while. I did not do anything in the bathroom at Bullywogs. No, no, no I was in the bathroom. You you saw the library? Oh, Daryl thinks that this is the punishment for jerking it. The Whoa. nuns did say that you jerked it too much. <laughs> but I mean, Wait, 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 wait. Daryl, what did you do in the bathroom at the no, Bullywogs? I didn't do anything in the bathroom. But I roll sense just, motive on yeah, whether... Go ahead, go ahead and roll <laughs> inside to see if he really Daryl did. did Gross. A gross. <laughs> What's he rolling? Is he rolling to decide he's rolling, if I did? He's rolling to see if you were telling the truth about not jerking off in the bullet <laughs> box. I rolled a 22. Okay, so you know for certain I did not but jerk Darryl off did not the- self-pleasure in the but- chick. He didn't wash his hands. <laughs> yeah, you find that I didn't wash my hands. Men don't wash their hands. I read about that. That's insane. That's crazy. You guys are all awful. You I wash don't your care. hands, probably. I don't care if you wash your hands. <laughs> Men are off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, again, they. I mean, to be fair, they said but blindness. Ben, I'm just and saying, it does, if I didn't touch anything in there, then I don't feel like I if need I to go wash hands my free. Hands. <laughs> what? Oh my god, you guys don't wash your hands. You, you wash your hands. No, we wash our hands. Your underwear it oh, takes butt stuff from your up. butt and it migrates I, towards your crotch. Wait, wait, you touch your crotch. That's not how hold underwear up. works. It's absolutely I, why you have to wash. I do not have a penis. Is it possible to go hands free yes. with a bit of tool assist? Yeah, but you still have to hit the flusher and you have to touch all this gross no, stuff. No, not if you don't flush. Oh yeah, no. I mean, like, what? listen, listen. Not if you don't flush. Not if you don't flush. Okay, so yeah, if you're a fucking monster human being and the reason the society will never actually get us to space, then yeah, I <laughs> guess you could not wash your hands. For clarity. I go hands free, you know, like yeah, I don't, course. yeah, and I still wash my friggin' hands. Yeah. Okay. Where the fuck were we? I don't know. We're on the, we're Daryl was wondering if his masturbation over the past 40 years has caused an eyeball to grow in his hands. So she goes, no, no, no. So you you got this from me. I'm saying, I hear dad fact Henry doesn't wash his hands. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah! No, I'm not saying watch, what Will you know does it or doesn't do in the bathroom. You know why? Henry for sure has never because, wa- because, because he soaps heard, are bullshit. Because he soaps heard, have chemicals. Because oh. soaps have chemicals, and he heard that having a little bacteria it helps. It's the, good for your system. The gut biome. Oh, the gut gross. biome. Henry's like, hey, if I was going from the bathroom to do neurosurgery, I'd wash my hands. Oh. All enemy attacks are going to target Henry Oak for the next two <laughs> sessions. Fun fact: Two weeks from now is that Henry has the flu. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's got a strong immune system. So Aaron says, he doesn't wash his hands. So you saw the library and this happened. Does the library like know about the no the what the library doesn't know. I mean, we haven't talked. I haven't said, hey, library, I have an eyeball in my hand now. So no, he no, doesn't, he know, doesn't know about the that. books. He, he doesn't what? know about the books. Oh, why would you say that? So the eye on your hand Be- opens, uh, and blinks, 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 <laughs> and then <laughs> disappears. I go, no, of course the library doesn't know that we still have all the books, like, just fine. Why would we constantly update the library, letting them know that we have all of our books? She goes, okay, well, I think I figured out what it was now because it's gone, but I think that was his way of spying on you. It's gone, but all Glenn said was about the books. He didn't say what happened. Because nothing happened. Yeah, nothing happened. Because we still have the books. Glenn's very proud. Hey, Daryl, I think I fixed your hand. High five. I go for a high five. No. Don't leave me hanging, bro. No, you, you, no, we're, okay. Up top. No, we're going to die. Put her there. We're not going to die because we're, we're going to figure out a way to not return the books. Oh. What? The eye opens back up on his head. The eye's still here. What are you doing? It never, it just, it disappeared. High high five. In the moment that it opens up, I go for a high five. I don't, I don't give you the high five. (laughs) High fives can be both given and taken. (laughs) <laughs> I dexterity move my hand yeah, away. Yeah, roll dexterity, roll five. post dexterity to see if you get. So there's more five dice we have rolled against each other than in any other episode. Eighteen, Matt. Fifteen plus three. Fifteen. Ooh. So, the, so he he managed to successfully high, high, five. high five your your the high the five, eyeball in your the hand. The way the high five works is the difference between the two. So that's a three. <laughs> Is a three quality high five. Yes. Yes, that's true. If you're rolling together, then you add it together. You Correct. can hypothetically get a 40 high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but instead you got a three. Five, but in the, that's the predator high five is a 40. High five. <laughs> that's a double natural 20. When you're rolling opposed high fives, they then you subtract them so that if you do beat them, you still can get like an 18 minus four. You still get a good 14 high five. But if it's close like this, this is a three high five. This is okay. easily a three high five. Yeah. So there's no like goose high five. No, 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 no. Okay. not even close. And Glenn did not wash his hands before this. <laughs> <Yeah. high five. laughs> See, uh, now I know. Now I know Beth is my people because definitely the Top Gun high five is cooler than the Predator high five. I, I do, fucking yeah, said it for sure. What? When, uh, the Predator high five is just oh, I'm buff. The fucking yeah. Top Gun high five skills. There's, you, yeah, you and there's like it. friendship and love and yeah. context <laughs> in that high five. Yeah, and the Predator the, high five is like everything about toxic masculinity in one single gesture. Yeah, which is why it's better. Because toxic masculinity is fucking awesome. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cinema doesn't work without toxic masculinity. Sorry, everybody. Every br- good movie you like is about men being horrible. <laughs> I also, I, also, I hate to bring it to you. Toxic masculinity, cool band name. And a cool call sign for a fighter pilot. Hey, Goose, it's me, your boy, toxic masculinity. <laughs> coming in hot. Coming in 12 o'clock high. I'm okay. like, damn, Top Gun is awesome. Okay, this is right. a very loose so episode, you high five the fucking open eye and you get some of its eye goop on you and goes and then closes and again. he gets some of my penis goop in it. He, so he gets what? conjunctivitis. He gets pink eye. All right, so the fucking <laughs> shuttle lands uh, right outside your van. Okay, <laughs> can we please though say that the because Glenn was rolling around in shit before this. That's, That's true. true. So yeah. the eye is now pink. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the library definitely has pink eye. The next time we see him. Yes, for sure. Nice. So is the library in here? Oh, in your hand? No, yeah. no, the library can be in there. You saw the library. Fuck like, you, library. I put my hand in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> you you put your shit stained hand. I put, down I put your my pants? hand like where my butt is. Okay. I go kiss my butt, asshole. We're coming uh, for you. Okay, so you feel the eye opening and closing against your butt. <laughs> It gives you little butterfly kisses on your your sacrum. This is too much. This is a line that cannot be uncrossed. This is a Rubicon that cannot be. You motherfuckers asked for BDSM and we got you some fucking library. I think we just invented a new thing. (laughs) Butterfly kisses on the tank. (laughs) Um, I didn't put it there. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you know, once it started, I don't know where my hand kept going. All right, oh, well, what goodness. do you want to do? You're by your van. Uh, you can see the, like, horses of the cops that went to come ooh, get you, ooh, and they I, took I, a shovel go, to you as well. I go, I go run over to the horse, and I go, yeah, 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 and I scare the <laughs> horses scare away. away, and they're gone. Like in the Western. That's like, great. All right. And then I want to get in the van, like, we gotta go, guys. All right, all right, everyone just, cool. everyone just, just stop. Henry's having a Henry tantrum right now. Everyone just cool down. All this right. has Glenn all been. Glenn checks his watch. Everybody calm down as a Henry tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> this has all been, we've all been crazy and talking about goofy nonsense for what feels like a really long time. And I just want to pause, pause for one ding dang second and <laughs> just talk to Aaron O'Neill for a second so we can just figure out what the H we're going to do next. Okay. While he's talking, I've slowly stepped back and I open the van doors and I'm like telling everybody to get in the van <laughs> so we can talk while we're in the van. Okay. All right. We're going to talk while we're in the van. Yeah. yeah is that cool? Okay. 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 All right. Aaron. Yeah. So our kids are in this place called Ravenloft. Yeah. Ravenloft's a castle in Barovia. Okay. I would come with you and help because that guy sounds horrible, but that place is really bad for fucking trees. Like all the mist and shit you saw in Rockport. Imagine that times like 10. Okay. So, so I can't a follow really, you there. Really bad place where this guy is. Yeah. Right. Or the okay. people, whoever is taking it. And you're shit. saying we should talk to them to get our kids back. I'm not saying what you should do. I'm just saying I've never seen magic like the kind of magic they use to take that kid. It's magic that I can't do. It's magic that I don't even want to say, but it's pretty, it's pretty fucking rowdy. What do you mean you don't want to say it? If I'm wrong about what it is, it doesn't matter. Look, just you guys often punch above your weight class, and I just want to make sure... <laughs> that you know it could get real bad. So just get your kids and bounce. Oh, can everybody roll perception with disadvantage for me? 16 with disadvantage. With disadvantage? 14 and nine, baby. I'm rolling fucking hot dice Two. tonight. 13. It's not my fault that these Thir- rocks 13 are fucking for me. magma, baby. Okay, so the van feels a little bit heavier. So it's a little bit lower to the ground when you step in. Like you can feel it like it's almost touching the ground. Hey, hey, is something wrong with your van, Daryl? It seems like it's riding a little low. Feels perfect to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, t- I point to Daryl that it's lower to the ground than oh, it used shit, to be. It is lower. I had a lot of chicken wings at the Blue Walks <laughs> when we were playing uh, trivia. Is anybody in here? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody else in here? I'm gonna make a search check. Uh, so it'd be investigate. I got an eight. You open the trunk. You're looking at all the seats and stuff like that, and it doesn't seem like there's anything inside the car. Oh, there's no kids in here. I guess nobody will care if I uh, let one rip. Then, <laughs> <laughs> yes, do it. Smoke them out. I said that really loud. That way, responds. Nothing happens. Uh, guys, I didn't have anything in me. I just, you know, usually Grant screams if he's like hiding or something. You don't have a toot ready to go. I don't have a toot, but the threat is usually enough. Okay, Henry calls on the powers of the dad force and rips the stinkiest toot he can oh, to try to get no. to smoke out whoever's in this car. Okay. Go, go ahead and roll for a toot. <laughs> Give me a little toot roll. He's got, that, he's got that all plant-based toot going. Yeah, it's true. So oh, it's yes. constant. <laughs> I'm never the one who gets the clutch natural 20, but I got a natural no. 20. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> This fucking shit. So, so why don't you go ahead and describe what a natural 20 toot is like? All right. Okay. Are we in the car? I feel like I'm not in the car. No, we Can you good. give me underneath, Freddie, you know that Mozart song? Like that <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from George, James of Sushi. Yes, yes, yes. 
So when Henry does a mega fart, it's a symphony. It has <laughs> movements. <laughs> Not first, bowel movements. First, though. a movement of silence, right? And then you just sense that something in the air around you has changed. <laughs> a and disturbance in the force. Here's what's incredible about a beefy Henry all vegetable, all bean diet fart is then you hear something and it sounds like a whisper of wind. That's the second movement. Oh, man. In the third movement, we really begin. We add fire to it. <laughs> and you feel it first in your body, on your skin before it comes oh, to your no, nose. No, no, no. And it's just a pungent, earthy scent that goes through your nostril into your brain itself. You think of every truck stop bathroom you've ever been into. It's like 20 Ratatouille moments all colliding into your head at the same time. <laughs> Why? How dare you invoke that movie? <laughs> and then we reach the real fire, the crescendo, as a second layer of smell. It's like a sulfur fart followed by like kind of a poop fart. You're like, did he shit himself? It doesn't make sense that it smells so much like poop. Is he doesn't, he's not looking like he pooped. And then... Is it like that taste that like lands on your tongue? That brings us <laughs> to Act 5, <laughs> the taste. Fuck off. The prestige. The prestige. <laughs> now every fart has three parts. <laughs> oh, acts. They show anyway. you a normal fart, but it isn't really normal. <laughs> Remember when Will wanted us to not talk about dicks so much? Yeah. Because he wanted to keep this podcast classy? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as that fart happens, <laughs> you see the van begin to rise up from out of the muck <laughs> a little bit. What the fuck? You see an arm crawl out from under the undercarriage oh, of the van no. and then another arm. Uh, you see the arms dig themselves in the mud no. and start pushing up. And you see the smiling, large nostril <laughs> face of the library. And he goes, delectable! <laughs> and he's wearing the van like a fucking hermit crab. What? It was him. He, he farted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Dungeons and Daddies is Matt Arnold as Daryl Wilson, Anthony Birch as our DM, Will Campos as Henry Oak, Beth May as Ron Stampler, and myself, Freddie Wong as Glenn Close. Theme song and outro is a song called All Right by Maxton Waller. This week, thank you to Robert Moore for submitting a cool item we use in the campaign, one of the many perks of being a Patreon supporter. Another is that you get a shout out from your boy, so shout out to James Eisengruber. Victor Tabling, Andrew J, Mike Uhl, and Chrysalis for supporting us on Patreon. And that Patreon is patreon.com slash Dungeons and Dads. And this week we got something special. This Halloween, October 31st, we're releasing part one of At the Mountains of Dadness, a three-part spooky prequel miniseries that we're releasing bi-weekly, starring the grandfathers of the four dads. This was the stretch goal that we hit, so thank you everyone for supporting us and helping us hit it. Matt plays Robert Wilson, a bookish line producer who dreams of becoming a stuntman. Will is Hildy Russett, the plucky undercover reporter dreaming about uncovering a big scoop. Beth plays Stud Stampler, a set construction worker who dreams of being on the silver screen, and I play a cocky, washed-up silent film star who dreams of his glory days by the name of Meryl Streep. This is free to all Patreon supporters at every level, so head on over to patreon.com slash dungeonsanddads if you want to hear this when it comes out. And uh, when you're over there, maybe uh, you'll see something along those tiers uh, that tickles your fancy. I don't know. Check it out. It's a cool website. Boy, we hyped up this episode on social... Well, I hyped up this episode on social media, didn't I? Well, this gets a little bit gross. What can I say? Thank you to everyone listening. And oh, you, oh sorry, you didn't hear about the social media? Brouhaha? Well, you're missing out. Miss in at Dungeons and Dads on Twitter, bit.ly slash Dungeon Dads for a private Facebook group, r slash Dungeons and Daddies for that subreddit, and bit.ly slash Dadgut, all caps, for the group transcription project. Next episode coming at you in another two weeks. That's going to be November 12th. And this week we're going to do something a little different for the Easter egg. This time it's going to be Max Waller's new theme song for At the Mountains of Dadness. Sit back, enjoy. Happy Halloween, everybody. There was a time when you could read between the lines You know they never brought you down Never brought you down i
down It wasn't a boxing you weren't thinking anyway So you never 